Fish from salt water to the Great Lakes to streams, I'll love gobies, sculpin, and even little suckers. This fly imitates those guys, particularly when you can sight fish, and is great on carp, bass, and bonefish, I suspect. Here's how to tie it. Let's start with the craft fur. Go ahead and get yourself a bit for a smaller tail. Remember the amount shrinks a bunch when you comb it out, which you should do right now. Now make sure to keep the underfur for dubbing later. Start your thread at the front of the hook here. Just get your thread attached and the tag cut and you're set to pop. We're going to create a bump of thread for the lead eyes by winding thread in one main spot. This particular version will end up being about two and a quarter to two and a half inches as intended for carp and smallmouth on the flats. As I've done so many times on these videos, I attach these by making crisscross wraps, winding around the eyes 360 degrees on top, and wrapping around each side a few times. Whenever you want a fly to ride hook point up, and particularly when a hook has a wide gap, make sure that you're using heavy enough weight to tip the point up. I've tied flies that looked smashing but that didn't turn over, so make sure to experiment with the weight and hook size before you tie a dozen or so. Learn from my friend's mistake, who may have done something like this. I know you wanted to watch me wind each strand of thread slowly and methodically. Just wrap down the back and be done with it. Let's bring in our craft fur now. Measure about one and a half the hook shank, or in this case about one and a half inches. Just place it on top and give it a loose wrap or two. Then wind the thread up the shank a little and give the craft fur a snip. After a few more useless thread wraps, we're going to use a permanent marker to color a few stripes. Grab the craft fur and pull it tight. Now use your marker to make four sets of stripes up the tail. I like to start on one side and do the other right after. Next, bring in the rubber legs, since it seems like the thing to do here, and rubber legs make the world better. Just give the legs a bit of tension and then wrap back. With these particular rubber legs, you want them more on top than on the sides, so make sure to do that. After you've tied these guys down, snip them a little past the craft fur and move on. Position your thread near the back, but not all the way back. I call this movement a prelude to a dubbing loop. Only when no one's listening, though. Go ahead and form your dubbing loop by making a thread loop, inserting your dubbing loop tool, wrapping all the way down the shank, and then back up to the eyes. Next, you're going to insert the dubbing into the loop and twist your dubbing loop tool. A little trick I use is to pre-shape my dubbing by rolling it into a cigarette shape. The length of the cigarette dubbing will vary with the pattern. This works with dubbings that will hold their shape and works better than moving the dubbing around in the loop itself. Once you have a nice moderately tight rope, you can wind it onto the shank to create your body. Make sure not to trap any fibers as you wind forward. Your other hand, bless its soul, will keep this from happening nicely. Once you get to the front, make some wraps around the dubbing loop and leave a little space for a hackle. Then cut the dubbing loop like so. I like to use my permanent marker here to make some modeling on the side, and that's one of the many advantages of having synthetics on patterns. Just add some dots on both sides of the fly, but leave the bottom marker free. Brush time. Brush the fibers out and then slick them back with your hand when you're done.
Bring in your natural hen hackle and tie it in by the tip with a little hanging out the front. Now fold the little tip back, take a few more wraps and then cut it off. Doesn't have to be precise since you'll be wrapping the hackle through. By the way, this would be about a number two hackle on a gauge, but you want a hackle that stands out both in color and size. Just wrap up to the fluff and then tie the hackle off with a few wraps. With this hackle, you want it to be predominantly on both sides of the hook rather than 360 degrees around the shank. So start separating it to both sides of the shank. At this point, turn the fly over and snip any fibers that are bugging you. Then once again, give the fly the alfalfa treatment and part the hackle down the center. After you're happy with your work, bring up a piece of rabbit fur and poke it toward the back part of the fly. Work it in slowly and over the barb if you have one still. When you've done this, remove the fly, slip the hide down, and insert the fly back into the vise. On a side note, I like grizzly colored rabbit fur, but I prefer the color to be more brown than gray. Both work just fine though. Now you're going to be laying the hide on top, so get all of the fibers out of the way before this. Then bring in your Zapigap or other glue and coat the head and even a little on the body. But be careful not to get any fibers on your brush if you use one, that is. And you've got a nice bunch of glue on and you're ready for the bunny. Bring the bunny up and then down onto the shank. You don't want to adjust the hide very much, so make sure it's where you want it. You can wet the hair a bit to keep it from getting stuck under the hide here. Lay it down and give it a push. And now find your tie-in point, but try to include more hair than is actually on the hide, since this will give you a nicer looking head. And we all want a nicer looking head. Make a loose wrap to bind everything down. Then make one more to secure everything, then pull any hairs up and wrap in front of the hide. Give the hide a snip, but not too close or the hide will pop out from the thread. Just use your skill on the thread to cover over the hide and make a nice thread head. You can develop these skills by screwing up on hundreds of flies over the years, if you're interested, that is. Then whip finish the fly and cut your thread by telekinesis, like I do here. Give the fly a good dose of Zapigap or other lacquer slash glue right between the eyes and on any thread that is exposed. Also cut the rabbit strip just short of the craft for a tail if you need to. Here's what it'll look like in the vise in catwalk fashion. Here's what it'll look like more or less to the fish with the addition of some movement from the water. The silhouette is really important with this fly and I hope it works for you.